beef with red kidney beans and I'm using the small kidney beans I love this small sort of pink color one it is from a can so that is one can of kidney beans that I drain and I rinse completely because it's usually packed in that thick sort of briny kind of liquid I don't like it plus it usually has a lot of sodium in there one and a half pounds of beef and I cut it up into one inch cubes this is it was a sirloin steak any cheap cut so um, go to the grocery store anything on sale because we're gonna cook this for about an hour and a half or so until it's fork tender what I did do after I cut it up I rinsed it with cool water and the juice of a lime if you don't have lime you can use the juice of a lemon or a couple tables about three tablespoons of white vinegar rinse it nice and dry here's where we're gonna season it so the first thing I like doing salt and it may look like quite a bit of salt but we are using we're going to be adding the beans to there later on. We will um, adjust that. A diced onion. I've got Caribbean green seasoning. Some tomato ketchup. It brings a lovely acidity to the game. I also have black pepper. And if you've seen me make any sort of brown stew, what a lot of people know as brown stew, my sort of base has always been this sort of marinade. And speaking about marinade, you can marinate this for about two hours before. So try to get it seasoned, slap some cling wrap over it, into the fridge for a couple hours, then remove it about half an hour before you start cooking, and you're good. I also have Caribbean green seasoning, which I mentioned earlier there, and Caribbean green seasoning, I have two versions, well, several versions on CaribbeanPod.com. You can head over there and find it recipe. It's essentially a sort of a blend or a puree of all the herbs we like using in the Caribbean, along with garlic and seasoning peppers. My base is olive oil, and I keep it in the fridge. It maintains that nice color and vibrancy, and we always have that ready to go. I also want some Worcestershire. tomato and that is one diced tomato again the full recipe as always will be on caribbeanpod.com so don't worry too much at this point you can head over there within 24 hours of watching this video and you will find it there I have some grated ginger scotch bonnet pepper and some fresh thyme although there is um, fresh thyme in that Caribbean green seasoning. I like to enhance the flavor as it cooks. So all we're gonna do now is give that a good stir. We're gonna put it into the fridge. We're gonna allow it to marinate and we will proceed after that. If you can do this overnight, your best thing yet. If you don't have time, if you really don't have time, well, you know what, just proceed right now. As a kid growing up on the islands, when mommy would season meats, whether it's chicken, fish, pork, beef, whatever, my favorite thing to do was the smell. Yo, I love the smell of herbs because, you know, that green seasoning has like garlic and all those herbs and everything else in there. Plus, we added the onion, the tomato, the Worcestershire. It's all kind of nice, bold flavors in there. We've got a nice, wide, heavy pot on a medium-high flame. In there, we've got a tablespoon and a half of olive oil to that. We're gonna add brown sugar, and that is just some golden brown sugar, a tablespoon and a half of that um, brown sugar. And what's gonna happen here, and if you've seen me made any sort of brown stew before, I'll go through the steps quickly because when it, once it starts happening, it'll be too quick for me to explain everything. The sugar is gonna melt. Once it's melts, it's gonna to start to go frothy. Once it goes frothy, it's gonna go a deep amber, not black, a deep amber. That is when you're gonna add the seasoned beef, marinade and everything into the pot and give it a stir. Your kitchen will become smoky because we're dealing with high heat. Be mindful that the spoon that you're using should be completely dry. Hot oil, uh, caramelized sugar and water don't mix. You are gonna endanger yourself. If it goes black, if it goes black, what you need to do, shut the stove off, allow this to completely cool, completely. Wash the pot, dry it, start back from scratch. If not, you will end up with bitter tasting stew beef with red beans. We don't want that. I don't want that for you, you don't want that for you, and you, you don't want your family having to eat terrible food. 
you know on my stove there are hot spots so notice the sugar over here is starting to melt quicker than anywhere else so what I like doing is giving it a stir to move it around so it melts evenly I don't want it to go black as I said I want that deep amber color so by moving it around into those hot spots I get a sort of an even sort of caramelization happening and we're not burning the sugar ladies and gentlemen I know too many people out here doing the YouTube and, and Instagram and TikTok and everything else and you're talking about burn the sugar no 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 don't burn that sugar you're gonna end up with something that's just terrible don't do that and stop they really need to stop that you know gosh I just hate that you see how the place is getting smoky and everything else it's starting to froth as I said it's going that deep amber but it's a light amber right now it's gonna go deeper depending on the lighting here that you know, I'm not sure how you guys are seeing it on camera but it needs to just go a little bit darker and then we will add In the same bowl where we marinated the beef, I wanted to add three cups of water. Set that aside, swish it around, and reserve it for another 10 minutes or so. What we're trying to do here now is just to stir the beef so it gets coated in that caramelized sugar. And I know the number one question I always get when I do the sort of uh, caramelized sugar browning of chicken or any sort of beef or pork or anything like that is will it be sweet and I can guarantee you this will not be sweet if you go overboard with the sugar obviously now we're gonna just continue doing this we're gonna bring it up to a boil and you can see quickly it's starting to come up to a boil so what I'm gonna do as soon as it comes up to a boil I'm gonna reduce my heat to medium low put the lid on and let it cook for 10 minutes took about three minutes so you can see how much water it naturally sprouted I didn't add any liquid to this I'm gonna hit that to stir and this is where we're gonna develop that rich color and Caribbean flavor that we so love in a brown stew I you know I don't even like saying the word brown stew you think brown already from being stewed why we need to repeat the brown in there anyhow I grew up calling it stew beef eh? so It's been 10 minutes. What I'm going to do now is crank up the heat. The reason being, we want to burn off all of that liquid that formed there till we start seeing the oil that we started with. That's going to sort of intensify and amplify the flavor of everything. You start seeing all of the oil on the bottom there. All of that liquid has burnt up. The sizzle that you're hearing will be louder. So it's an indicator that the, um, the water is all gone. It's got that deep, lovely color. So here is where now we will add the red beans. And we're gonna follow that up with the canned coconut milk. It's a bit chunky there because it is from a can. Um, if you have fresh coconut milk, I envy you because I wish I had the ability or the patience to make my own. I do have the ability, just not the patience. I also like adding grated ginger at this point. If you wanted to add you know, quite honestly, a couple other flavors you can add in here, which will be brilliant, is a couple bay leaves along with a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil. It gives it a lovely flavor, but I'm doing it old school the way mommy taught me how to do it. I also got half of a scotch bonnet pepper. I'm just going to tuck down into there. Of course, we got to give that a stir to mix it around. I don't have any bay leaves at the moment yet. Hard to believe. But um, had I had some bay leaves, I would add it in here. And finally, we need to add the water from the bowl where we marinated the beef. That can go into the dishwasher now, or if you're washing it, wash your ways. Now we're gonna hit that to stir. Quite a bit of liquid. This is gonna cook for about an hour and 20 minutes because I want the beef fork tender. I grew up with, yo, know, Mommy never Skylark is always real tender meat we always were exposed to. And my daughters can you know they can attest to the same Polly will do the same thing once he start getting into this. Gonna bring it up to a boil, we're gonna reduce it to a simmer, put the lid on slightly ajar and let that gently cook. Now here's the thing. If you wanted to add the ginger when you season the beef, you could have. If you wanted to add the ginger now as I did, 
works. Some people, they like adding the ginger near the end so you get that pronounced ginger flavor. I like the ginger to make its way into the beef. Also, the red beans that we added in there is from a can um, and it's fully cooked. So if you wanted to add it later, it's totally up to you. But again, I like adding it in here because I want all of those flavors during that hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half to come together and do nice things for us. So you see we got bubbles going on. I got some more fresh thyme. I like, you know, I just like, you know, repeating the flavors. Even though the thyme is in the green seasoning, as I said earlier there, I just like repeating the flavor. I'm going to turn my heat down, lid on, boom, slightly ajar. And let that go. If you find that all of your liquid is burning up quickly, you may add some more water in there. No chicken stock, beef stock. No, you don't need that stuff. Water, coconut milk. That is the, oh man, big things happening with those two fellas. <laughs> Sup soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I mean, I'm trying to tell people the email address, them butts will take me address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irie, Irie. An hour and 20 minutes on that cross between a rolling boil and a simmer. Remember to monitor it if you need to add more water. This will further thicken because this is a heavy cast iron, glazed cast iron pot that I'm using. So what I'm gonna do is taste it here and adjust the salt. Now keep in mind a couple things. We want to make sure that when, to compensate for that heat, that residual heat, that when it thickens up, we will have the sort of gravy consistency that we like. And two, we want to make sure the pieces of beef are fork tender. You know, while I'm not using a fork, I'm using a small spoon, I'll show you what I mean. Notice how that just fell apart there. That is the sort of texture you want on your beef. We ain't trying to fight up, we ain't trying to Yo man, we ain't trying to do that to with teeth. I mean, so we have teeth there, but we need to protect them for later on and we hold these. Taste it for salt, adjust it. And the final thing, I have a combination of parsley and scallion. Some of you call it green onions, some of you call it spring onions. But I like finishing off with that herbal sort of finish. I am going to turn off the stove. Everything is to my liking. Chris here, CaribbeanBud.com. Always a pleasure having you all in the kitchen with me. We've made that wonderful stewed beef fork tender, packed with the goodness of Caribbean herbs. And, and of course, we have that coconut milk in there, the red beans. Yo, you need some rice in your life right about now, you know. All right, all right, let me just hit all your little stir again and show all you what we have here. Let's look at that now. Proper things, boy.